about Joey Biden, Joey B, Joey B's has been in the news. Uh, he's back, you guys. He is back. Uh, you know, he got his, he got the CPU upgraded and, uh, we, we got a lot of speech patterns from the Buttigieg, uh, from, from the Buttigieg program. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's taking well to the Biden program. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a period of adjustment because there, there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of malarkey coming out of his mouth, if I may. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like I've I've watched these clips of him in interviews from his private underground den, you know, because because, you know, you know, Joe Biden is the kind of person that probably has like a den with, you know, like a like a like a dead animal on the ground, a fireplace uh, and uh, and and a, a, a trophy of. Uh, of, uh, you know, all the bills that he wrote to fuck over the American working class. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Joe Biden has had uh, a pretty large sexual assault case come out um, that, has, that has hit the waves. And, uh, and we are, I'll, I'll bring this up in just, just a minute, is this is additionally to the seven that came out in 2019, about a year ago. About a year ago, there were seven women that came out um, with, um, I think it would go into the category more of sexual misconduct with them. And I'll, and I'll address that here in a minute. But this, this case specifically is a straight up sexual assault. Like he assaulted this woman. Um, Tara, Tara Reed, Tara Reed, I think is her name. Um, she, she has done a couple different interviews and I watched the, the one she did on The Hill uh, Rising with uh, Crystal Ball and Sagar and Jetty. And uh, I mean, it's like it was difficult for her to tell the story, as, as I imagined that it would be uh, to talk about this this level of a this level of trauma that somebody is going through. Right. She's a former uh, Joe Biden aide and currently a domestic uh, domestic violence activist. So she, she fights on behalf of people that have been through any sort of domestic violence, right? So uh, the story is that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her um, in the early 90s. And there's a, a lot of detail um, that she gives in, in the story that um, I'm, I'm not going to fully recount. And this, this, I understand this is sort of a touchy subject. So if this is sort of a um, a touchy or triggering subject, then I totally understand if you got to tune out for a little bit and come back. Uh, 100% understand. Um, you know, make sure that you take care of you if something gets a little bit too intense. Take a pause. Take a step back from it. Um, but he, uh, she got a gym bag for him, and she was going to give this gym bag, deliver this gym bag to to Joe Biden, and uh, and in a, and they met up in like a semi private place uh and he like just went in and sexually assaulted her like went up her skirt and and um tried to like make out with her and stuff like it's just it it's a pretty visceral uh visceral account of what happened and then he gets pissed and this sounds very much like joe biden too uh she says come on man i thought you liked me which okay just because you thought somebody liked you doesn't doesn't mean that's an excuse for you to just fucking try to round all the bases as forcibly as you possibly can, right? Like, you you are at this point playing Little League Baseball with a fucking Abrams tank is what you're doing. That's that's essentially what that statement is saying. That statement of, come on, man, you I thought you liked me, so I should be... It is, it is within... It, it is within my rights. I've earned this. Is like what a weird fucking thing to do, right? It, you know, you're you're gonna you're gonna crack the ball with the uh, with with the fucking muzzle of the tank, and then you're just gonna ride around. And anybody that can, even if somebody tries to touch the ball, you you fucking fire a, a tank projectile at them, uh, and and just say that. Well, come on, I'm trying to I'm trying to get the home base here. I'm trying to I'm trying to wet this whistle. You know, what the fuck is wrong with this? So she couldn't, I mean, as you can imagine, uh, you know, uh, 
a tale as old as time, she couldn't go and report this to anybody because Joe Biden was in a position of power. Um, early ninety, uh, early nineties. He's a he's a, you know in in Congress. He's a senator. He you know who was she going to go report that to, and who would do anything about that? Joe Biden is somebody that used his position of power to attempt to get sexual favors uh, from a attractive young woman that was his aide at the time. Uh, and then after he gets mad at her and is walking away from her, he goes, you're nothing to me. Cool, bro. So the Democratic Party's uh, presumptive nominee is apparently just an incel that just gets mad at women when they say we don't like you in a in a romantic or, or sexual capacity. That's that's who the Democrats have decided to to nominate. This is no different than Trump at this point. And my concern is hearing things like that, there's going to be a certain part of this country that looks at that level of power, that admires that level of power, is going to look at this and say, well, this is exactly what we want in a leader. Um, someone that is, you know, a champion of democracy, but knows how to use authoritarian force because we're, we have deemed ourselves the best. And because we've deemed ourselves the best, we are the best. This... Fucking like ego driven shit. This macho thing that is in this country, this machismo that we that we revere so much, um, you know, rather than being like, oh wow, I'm I'm so sorry, I misread some signs. Um, perhaps take. Would you like to go out to dinner with with me or or whatever? Also pretty sure that meant that you cheated on your wife. <laughs> pretty sure that means that Joe Biden used sexual assault to cheat on his wife. This is the presumptive Democratic nominee. And there's a lot of people that are like, well, he did some good things. He's a respected senator, blah, blah, blah. Sure, but his crime bill sucks. Uh, he worked with segregationists. He won't apologize or say that his mindset and thought process has evolved. Um, he constantly just evokes Obama like Obama was the, you know, fucking gold standard of presidencies. Not really. I think Obama tried at best. I would, I would, I'm willing to, I'm willing to give to that he tried his best and fell into the system itself and gave into the system itself. I'm willing to say that much. But this guy's no different than Trump. He has horrific right-wing policies, um, and he thinks that he's above the law, and he can use his and leverage his position of power to do whatever the fuck he wants. As of now, there are no apologies from Joey B. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that there will be any level of apology either. Uh, because every time that his record has brought into place and it's like, look, this piece of bill, like this legislation that you fucking put into place has ruined the lives of so many fucking people. Uh, his response is, well, I'm proud of my record. OK, I'm, I'm fucking proud of it. How dare you question it? Uh, and he gets pissed off and starts yelling at reporters and shit. Uh, I believe that it would be the same thing. Uh, he, he's, he's proud of his record, including the record of all the women, uh, that he has assaulted by using his position of power, uh, as a point of leverage. So, in 2019, there were seven accusations, <clears throat> right? There were seven women that came out and accused Joe Biden of, I will say, sexual misconduct. A lot of them were, was like sniffing their hair 
the you know and uh hugging them touching their thighs very like for way too long or holding holding on to them just fucking just holding on to them for like way too fucking long um like people that are desperate for human contact they don't do this sort of stuff uh and basically at that point he flipped it around didn't apologize for it kind of blamed the the people that he did it to like he his his statement was was like fucking if you weren't such a if you weren't such a snowflake you wouldn't have a problem with with this he said he said something to the effect of uh, the gestures of support support that he's offered women <laughs> which is like what <laughs> what were those gestures sniffing their hair grabbing them and he was like this is how I show that I care I care by just grabbing onto you and being like look at the care just look at the care it's like Jesus Joe there's other ways of doing it possibly by legislating Medicare for all that would show that you care, but you're not going to fucking do that. And and this whole like victim blamey thing of like, well, the times have changed. And, you know, back in my day, this was fine. I could I could go into a semi private place and, and try to round the bases using a tank. That was just that was just the way that you did it. That was just the time that showed that you were a caring leader when you pulled your dick out and expected all the women to, to, to suckle on it, that's just, that's showing that you care. That's showing that I care, and that's showing that you care about me. It's just this symbiotic relationship. That's all that is. And it's not surprising that he went down that route, because it, the, the last real coherent thing that he said was that he has no empathy for this generation. He has no empathy for changing times. Of course he doesn't. Tara, uh, Tara Reid went and tried to get, uh, you know, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, et cetera, et cetera. She went to them and was like, hey, this is the person that you're standing on stage next to. Uh, and Elizabeth Warren just basically said, contact your local reps. Kamala Harris didn't say anything at all. And look, I get it. You're Even if you're running a campaign and you don't want to try to use this to politicize your uh, your campaign, the reason I make an exasperated sigh is that sexual assault, in my opinion, is an apolitical topic. It's a it's a human rights topic. Um, it's how you treat other people, right? And uh, and that's not a political topic. That is a human rights topic. Um, you know, Times Up, which is a five hundred one three C that uh, tries to help people in in Tara's position. Um, did say that it was too political and that it might jeopardize her 5013C status uh, and tried to get her I think they, they the, the report that on on rising was that they, that uh, they uh, said that they were trying to get her in, you know hooked up with a, 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 a pro bono um, lawyer to help her with that situation but it was too political because Joe Biden is a prominent political figure especially now running for president um, you know so, I think that I think I don't think it should matter. In my opinion, I don't. I really don't think it should matter uh, whether whether somebody's political or not. Um, you try to unconsensually have sexual relationships with somebody. I'm trying to. I'm trying to say this as like. scientifically as possible <laughs> without getting into like brutal terms you know because i and I, i'm I, it, like the stories like this kind of piss me off a whole lot so i'm trying to stay measured about it um but it's just not it doesn't matter right it it doesn't matter whether the person that is being accused of these crimes is a political figure or not making a statement like that um that oh, it's too political or whatever, is, is, just, is just another example of how you let these people 
that are in a position of power get away with whatever you want. And regardless of whether we're in a democratic republic or not, this is authoritarian. Ideologies like this are authoritarian. To sit there and say, well, we can't go after this person. Um, we, can't, we can't even pursue the case. We can't even see if this is true or not and, and, and have you know, due process for the situation to try to get justice for an average American citizen. We can't do that because this guy is in a position of power. This guy, is, this guy has a position of political power. Uh, to me, that's just, I mean, that's just, you're running into authoritarian language. You're running into authoritarian territory. So anybody that has a position of political power can just do whatever the fuck they want with and they can get away with it. Ooh. Doesn't sound like democracy to me, folks. There is a, there is another kind of weird little point to Tara's story as well. Uh, and, uh, uh, that I was just like, what the fuck? Like, how far do we need to go with this? Um, is uh, she was smeared? <laughs> she got caught up in the Russiagate smears. She got caught up with Russiagate smears because she was writing a book or writing a a, a poem, and she wrote a blog about like Russian history um, from the seventies and eighties and uh, what was going on during Cold War era stuff. And she made a statement that she doesn't support Putin because Putin probably won't support her. You know, this guy is, has backed off on uh, domestic violence cases and stuff. So, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do with anything, right? This is, again, it's a politicization of, of, of something that's apolitical, in my opinion. This is a human rights issue. It's not a, it's not a political issue. So it's like, oh, well, this Russia gator is coming in to, to you know, have these allegations against the the corporate leader of the DNC, the the de facto leader of of our, uh, of the person that we sh we we are indoctrinating as our leader. And then some of the posts that were being shared weren't even hers. <laughs> like it's just like okay, so that is how much more do we need to prove that that this McCarthyist Russiagate bullshit is is not real? Is is a fucking scam? And a political play that means nothing at this point. The last note I'll make on this story um, is this. Uh, so Tara was talking about what happened afterwards, the aftermath of it. And, and the aftermath is that she lost a lot of self-esteem. And part of the reason why, you know, um, sexual assault victims and sexual abuse victims don't come out is because of that. Because people will... Uh, berate them or call them liars or they won't look into their case they won't take them seriously and look this is super not the fucking time to do that right uh especially now more than ever it's never a time to do that uh so if somebody comes out and says that this has happened to me don't don't be like don't get on don't get on the comment threads and and get all shitty with them you know don't do that. That's un that's completely unnecessary. That has no basis uh, in any forms of communication. Like, there's nothing. Like, what's the fucking point? And the other thing I will say to, um, to 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 my corporate Democrat friends uh, that that are in that vote blue no matter who camp. Joe Biden is blue and acts like he's part of the red. I don't think your argument has any standing, especially now. The vote blue, no matter who argument, no longer has any sort of real viability. It, it didn't to begin with. I, I never really thought it had any sort of real viability, but um, now more than ever, especially with the news of this stuff coming out, uh, you know, it just doesn't hold up. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. 
Um, I'm going to be making daily videos, so make sure you come back to this channel. Make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that bell so you're getting the notifications uh, because we are going to be putting up videos every single day, uh, keeping you guys updated on what's going on around the world, keeping our critical thinking skills uh, up to date as well, uh, talking about some interesting ideas, talking about some topics that you won't hear on your corporate mainstream outlets. Uh, I'm also a touring stand-up comedian, uh, but uh, at the moment, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to tell you guys about. So uh, if you have the means to and would like to, to, to donate to this channel, to donate to uh, creating videos to improve the quality and quantity of these videos, feel free by, uh, by going to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate that's r-a-m-a-n noodlescomedy.com slash donate there you will find various different ways that you can either become a sustaining member uh, via those big orange buttons patreon bandcamp and even paypal uh, or by just making a one-time donation uh, via the aforementioned paypal venmo cash app uh, whatever you feel most comfortable doing and that's if you have the means to do it i understand that we're all struggling through this time uh, so all of these videos are going to be available for free and like i said will be up every single day and a huge way that you can help uh is by sharing these out uh hit it hit it up on your social feeds on on the on the twitters and the and the alternative social feeds and the instagrams and the facebooks just share it around tell it tell as many people as you possibly can uh, especially if you enjoy uh, the topics that we are discussing on this channel and once again make sure that you are subscribed you hit that like button um, and get uh, get new eyes on this channel thank you guys so much uh, I, I, and everybody that's already become a sustaining member or a patron um, or has donated uh, thank you so much. It really, really means a lot, and it helps. Every little tiny bit helps in uh, in in in, the, in this time of of need. So uh, be good to each other. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you tomorrow with new videos.